see the older version. This is quite new. So if you download, I recommend you as recommended here. If you're using Windows, you download this uh, installer version because uh, it comes with the um, list of corpus that you can use, like American English corpus you know, 2008 and also British English uh, and all these brown corpus and whatnot. So it, it comes with the existing corpus that you can play with. Um, if you download the portable one, this is easier, meaning there's no installation involved. You download, you just click, you can run it. So this is suitable if you want to put it in your time drive, <laughs> if you want to save it somewhere for easier usage. Um, for Mac, you can download this version. Unfortunately, I've tested on Mac uh, version as well. The fourth one is not that stable. So for Mac users, you might want to try 3.5, but you can try uh, 4.2 first. Um, and if you encounter any problem, then you can try 3.5. The problem is always what I notice is the um, the loading of corpus. If you have a very large corpus, once you load, it crash. You know, it crashes uh, for, for this um, Mac, or Mac version. For Windows version, somehow it's stable because I think they are using Windows anyway. Right, so you can try download this and install. It's quite straightforward. Just download the installer. Um, and then install it accordingly. Once you have installed, you will see uh, this icon, right? But the icon, um, if you see the installer, where is it? Yeah, the installer and everything, you make sure you create the um, shortcut on your desktop, all right? Or if you can't see the shortcut, then you just search for icon in your in your computer, all right? For, for Mac, I think it's quite straightforward. You just drag to the application folder, then you can run it uh, directly, okay? So now, once it's, you install, you will see this, okay? Uh, my advice to everyone, before we even talk about um, Encon, you need to have your corpus ready or whatever you want to analyze. Uh, if you're doing a simple discourse analysis, then you need to make sure that your your corpus is ready, basically, you know, like a, like a compilation. So, um, the the tip is you can save your corpus in Microsoft Word, but when you want to use Encon, it will be good if you save it as text file. So what I normally do, I will clean it uh, directly using Notepad, right? So if you go to your computer, you just find Notepad, you will see a clean Notepad like this, right? For example, then you can search your corpus. Let's say you're looking for the star articles. Let's go to the star. <clears throat> um, there, there are some tools that you can extract web content directly, but I noticed due to current situation of website full of ads, um, it's not useful because, um, how to put it, there are quite a number of software that you can use to extract uh, content from website. The problem is because most website now, they have ads, so the extractor somehow will extract everything and then including all the like, you know, all these menu tags, everything will be extracted. So it will, it will disturb your, your, your kind of your uh, text, textual data, right? So let's say you, you found this article, this is a bit manual, um, but I encourage you to do this first before you even go to Encon. So let's say you want to take this, sorry, take this, so I'm going to do it side by side um, so that you can see it. So you just copy the headline, for example, then paste it here. Uh, for the Encon data or the textual data, you don't have to worry about um, you don't have to worry about formatting, as long as the word are all with space. Don't join them, right? So let's say down here, if you don't need the details of the the person, you just copy, and then avoid copying all these things because this will disrupt your your data. So copy, paste, and then. For ads, you can copy like this, but uh, later on, I'll ask, or you can copy everything like this first, you delete it later. But depending on how fast you can work on this, like you can see this icon video, and then you just delete. These are not related, right? Delete, also read, also delete, also read, delete, right? Or you can compile everything first and then do a search of uh, also read, you know, like because like, the star has this trend they like to insert this in between because you know that you're using the star, for example, as your main source, then you can just search also read and then delete that thing because it's, it's not your main data. Your main data is the article, right? 
So uh, and also related stories you have to copy. So this is one article. Depending on how you want to work, uh, some people will do it one by one. Like now, this is one, right? So you can do. You can save it as the star. Let's O one. Oh sorry, O one. You can go by articles if you want to, right? Uh, if you don't want to go by article, meaning if you have one thousand article, you have one thousand text files, right? If you don't want, then you can go by, you know, whatever categorization you want. For example, by by month. So all the November one, you just put in one text file, so you can continue copying. You just have to enter, um, you know, enter down. And then go to another article. Let's say just randomly pick. Yeah, I'm not using any categorization. So I just copy again. All right. And then paste. And then, you know, repeat the same steps to compile your data. I think this is the part where it is quite uh, a bit more tedious because um, if you are using software to do this, it can do, you know, it can do the work, but then you still have to do cleaning because. Uh, the data capturing are going to capture everything. It's going to capture every single text that they can find on the web page, which is not meaningful because you still have to do the cleanup. So if you do like what I'm doing now, at least you can spend, I don't know, depending on how time, but normally I'll spend about two, two hours just to extract whatever I can first, and then I'll move on uh, to do something else and then come back and do it again if you want to. All right. But my point is compile it according to your categorization like this word you can remove because it's advertising for the web just now compile it first nicely organize it nicely then uh, save it then we go to ncon because without having this you ca you can't really use ncon to to do whatever you want to do the analysis part right so this is one okay so i have quite a number of sample corpus here um, including uh, dialect DMS and also Malay uh, list centered. So just to demo for you today, but two ways you can do your discourse analysis, for example, by compiling your own data, like, you know, the star Malaysia Kini or whatever, or um, you can also download existing corpus. Uh, I think you can search. Uh, there are many, many corpus. Like I have brown corpus here and all that. You can just download and then use it for your own analysis, right? Or you can use it as a reference, okay? Now, let's launch um, NCON now. I'm not sure if you have downloaded. If you have not downloaded, then you can do it later. Um, first thing I want to do is to enlarge it so that you can see. So I'm going to go to, sorry, go to setting, tool setting, not the global setting, font. I'm going to make the font bigger. So that you can see all right so you can change the font size if you want to so this is the new version 4.2.4 if you have the older version i encourage you to update because the analysis seems to be better in the 4.2.4 version so you try to download this uh, version now you need to be familiar with the software interface first it's, it looks complicated but it's actually very straightforward <laughs> You have a target corpus here, zero, zero, nothing here. Target corpus is the, the corpus that you want to analyze. For example, if you're doing this course analysis on a certain theme in newspapers, that will be your target corpus. So you, you compile everything first, and then you're going to load it, right? So there are many ways to load the corpus. If you go to file, there's this open file as quick corpus. If you click on this, it will immediately ask you to find your corpus. All right, um, let's say the start and then it will load. This one, I don't encourage you to do this because if you do a quick corpus uh, file, once you close it, right, once you close and con, um, sometimes it doesn't save the whatever you need to save. So I prefer uh, whenever you want to use and con, go to corpus manager. So just open corpus manager. I have some loaded here already. All right. So once you open Corpus Manager, there's Corpus Database, Raw File, and Word List, right? Three types. Corpus Database are the one that you already created. Like you can see under user is yours. Default list is given by NCON. Uh, NCON provide American English 2006 list and British English to, uh, 2006 list. So this, this co available corpus, normally we use it as a reference corpus later to compare. If you want to find, for example, academic words uh, in 
in the uh, British English corpus, then you can go for, um, if you if you enlarge this, you will see this. They have press, editorial, religion, blah, blah, blah. These are some um, available corpus that you can download and you can compare, right? The American one, if um, uh, academic English is under learned, learned DB. So I have downloaded this. So what you need to do, let's say you want to compare your, uh, your corpus with the existing one. Let's say we press, you just have to click on this, select it, right? Select it. If you see available mean it's not in your, it's not in your endcon yet, select it, click connect online, and then click update. And then it will ask you, are you sure? So yes. Then it will download this uh, five megabyte of uh, corpus. So you have your corpus ready. If you go to your list, you will see the green dot here. So the green dot is indicating, um, you know, the green dot is indicating uh, that you have it in your database. So now, uh, if I were to, wait, uh, too big. Okay. Now this is this is corporate database is whatever we have you your your own list and also the default list given by Encon. This is one way of loading, but I think most of us will be doing the second one, raw file. Raw file means you you did just a, like what I did just now. You compile from the star, you know, Malaysia Kini or whatever. If you if you are doing transcription, you transcribe all the interviews, blah blah blah. You know, just put it in the text file. This is where you you create it. So go for raw file and then name it nicely. No space. You can use underscore, but no space. For example, this is the star. Um, I'm just using, let's say, smoking. Let's say I'm looking for articles from the star about smoking, right? So I just put some name like this, the star smoking. Then I have to add my files. The corpus files are the one that I asked you to compile just now. So just add, go, go and find your corpus. Let's say I have the star one now. And then I can add another one, the star two. So if you have 10, 11, you know, hundreds, just load it, right? But make sure you know, you know, all this categorization. So you can go by article, you can go by date, you can go by month, you can go by themes, right? Uh, depending. So you can load as many as you want. Uh, or if you want, you can compile in one uh, folder and then add directory. And then you will load, let's say, if I want to use uh, dialect my Strawa, so I just put here and then I just select folder. It will load all the DMS uh, file that I have, all right? So uh, you don't have to worry about the rest. Basic index uh, setting, like all this indexing, they're already uh, uh, done for you in a way. So you don't have to change anything unless later on you prefer to do some deeper analysis, then you can play with this. For now, I think you just uh, don't do anything yet. Just then create. Okay, you can see the corpus has been created. So once you have created your corpus, you will have the corpus name as the star smoking, right? The star smoking. So you can see the token count. Sorry, the token count is this one. I have 3,903, right? Uh, token may be fully words. Some, uh, uh, some could be, you know, letters, depending on how you extract your, uh, how you compile your data just now. So you have to do a bit of cleaning later, but at least you have everything there, right? Now, what you need to pay attention to in this part is this thing called target corpus and reference corpus. So what we have loaded now is in the target corpus, the one that we want to analyze. So I'm going to return to main video, uh, main window. Then you will see only one here, target corpus. All right. Okay. Now we can start playing around with this tool. Uh, KWIC is keyword in context, used to be called concordance. Um, KWIC concordant means you try to find how the words are used in context. So this is useful if you are having a word list that you want to check. For example, you are looking for emotive words. You already have the emotive word list, let's say 20 words that you want to find. Then you can find them according to your da uh, corpus database now, based on whatever I have. Let's say I want to check on smoking. So all I have to do is I just type smoking here. Um, I tick words. I don't have to tick case or regex. Case means it will be case sensitive, right? Case sensitive means it only detect the one with a small case or uppercase. So don't tick it. If you tick it, then it will look only for uppercase or lowercase, all right? Regex means all combination. 
So uh, if you check for smoking, it will be checking for smalls, king, you know, all this. It will all look for all kinds of combination, which can be confusing. So normally we don't use this. Then result set, you can go for all hits. You can go for top 10, top 50, 100, depending, but we don't go for random. So we just see all this first. Then contact size, normally is 10 tokens. Contacts mean the before and after. I think you will see once I click start. Okay, maybe I click start. You can see the contacts here. If left contacts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. So if you want a longer contacts or you want a shorter contact, you just play with this. Let's say you don't want that long. You just want to see the, the contacts within five words or five tokens. Click start. It will reduce the token size. Okay, but normally 10, I think it's quite nice if you want to... You know, when you do this course analysis, you want to see the context. Then it will sort uh, according to frequency. So let's say you want to check in the use of the word smoking in this article, in this, the, not article, in this uh, compilation of articles that you have from the star. You can see that smoking is widely used for uh, smoking products, smoking product, blah, blah, blah. You can see because of the bill anyway, right? And then you can, you can also see other things, right? Obviously, if you look at this, result it's quite biased in a way because i only compile articles about the you know the recent smoking product for public health 2023 bill right but um you can do all kind of sorting you can sort by frequency or by value but um sometimes if you want to check the this side you don't want to check on the right context you just change the option from uh, sort to left and then start then it was sort by left okay so obviously for this uh, database or this corpus that I have, it's all anti-smoking, anti-smoking, blah, 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 because of the context. Okay, so you can see how it's, how it's organized. This is for keyword in context. Now, the beauty of Ancon is once you load it and you search for this one, you can play around and click on it. Then you can see its use in the article itself. Like now I can see how it's used. All right, so let's say you notice this one. You can just double click on it and then it will show you exactly in the um, corpus that you have. So let's say if you're reporting for your studies, you can just extract it as your excerpt, right? Take it out and put it as your excerpt to, to prove how uh, smoking is used. Or you can just show the whole table, like the, maybe the top 10, right? This is 1 to 51. You can reduce it if you want to. Um, you can reduce it, let's say top 10, all right? Or maybe top 50, depending on how you want it. How do you copy? Um, Ancon, the previous version, allows you to export um, as, um, how to put it, export as a text file. You can see, don't be confused with this one. This is export setting, nothing to do with the data. So if you want to save this one, it's under this one now, save current tab results. If you click on this, it will save as the uh, KWC result and then TXT. Let's say I try to save this first. Uh, so that you can, now it will be like this, right? Then you will know the file, da, 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 right? But not that nice. So what we normally do is you can just click this top left, just like Excel, uh, top left, click it. It will highlight everything. If you want to see all, then put all hits. Highlight this, uh, copy, go to edit, copy, or control C, open your Microsoft Word, <clears throat> If you want to, or Excel, that's even better. And then you can copy the whole thing, right? Of course, this one, you have to change the orientation a bit. Okay, so this is this is how you um, kind of copy, extract it. Or if you want, you can op also open the, um, Excel and then just, you know, paste it. <clears throat> of course, you have to adjust all the, all the you know, all the things uh, manually, okay? Because the export for Ancon is always text file, uh, TXT, so it doesn't um, keep the formatting. So if you want to keep the formatting, like the colors and everything, then you have to copy and paste to a Word document of Excel, right? Something like this. I think Word document uh, would be quite quite easy. Obviously, because my font is bigger uh, in the Ancon, you can resize accordingly first before you copy. Um, what I mean here is this. Before you even copy all this, you might want to go to setting, global setting, and then under font, you change according to your, your 
the font that you like first. For example, Times New Roman. Okay, Times New Roman, font 12. Change it first before you copy because it's easier. You don't have to change the formatting later because later on, if you go to Microsoft Word, when you highlight everything and you try to change the font, it doesn't work sometimes. Not all the time, but you know, it, uh, it, it may happen. Okay, that's one. This is under keyword in context. Now, if you go to plot, um, I'm using the same data. I'm using the same word again. Plot here means it will, if you have more than one list here, like I have one and two, or if you have 10, it will detect the usage of the word in terms of its dispersion according to your uh, copper size. For example, let's say I just start first. You can see I have two set of data here, the star one, the star two. So from the plot itself, I can see that smoking appears more in the first file. It doesn't appear much in the second file because I'm searching for the word smoking. This word, the it's frequently used in the first one, right? Because of the token. And then the frequency is 41. And then you can see the dispersion is spread out across the, you know, whatever you have compiled. For, uh, for the star two, it's only used, you know, like, maybe randomly or at, you know at certain certain lines and only you can see the dispersion the plot may not be useful for your case maybe but um, if you have a lot of articles if you compile by articles then you can see how uh, the word is used across articles um, so it's kind of interesting to also visualize this so you can see the dispersion is 0 0.8 0 0.4 means the higher means the more is used across the um, you know, if you go by article, then it's meaningful because you can say that the word smoking is widely used in that article, not in the second one. Assuming that you have one article and second article and blah, 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 you have 10 articles that you can do this kind of comparison. And it gives you a nice visualization of how the word is spread out across the, the uh, you know, the article, right? If you, want to, if you want to see how it's used, you just click on it and then it will show you all the detection. Like this line alone, Right, this line alone has one, two, three, four, five. Five. The word smoking is used five times in this line alone. I mean, that's the that's the that's the how to put it an explanation for the plot. Okay, I'm not sure if you have used this before, but um, normally this plotting uh, visualization is is used for multiple articles or multiple uh, corpus comparison. Then you can see, um, you know, the the usage of the. Uh, certain words in certain contexts. Um, for example, another example would be dialects. If you have like uh, 10 dialects comparison, you want to search how is used, a word is used in across dialects. Once you search, then you can see the dispersion. Then you will notice that, oh, maybe in that dialect, the word is not used at all because it will be blank. Here it will be totally blank. All right. If you don't like the color blue, you can change the color to another color <laughs> and, and whatnot. Okay. Any questions so far? So you can see the same data set can be used for keyword in context. Now I'm, I'm moving to plot. Okay. Right. And then the plot, of course, it will still show you the frequency. So the word smoking is used 41 times in this file, only 10 times in that file. So obviously the distribution is higher in the first one. All right. File view is exactly the file that you have. For example, if I have two files here, if you go to file view, then you will see the exact, um, you know, view of the whatever hack corpus you have, right? So, uh, which is why when you copy all this into your text file, you have to be very careful so that you don't, um, you know, copy something that you don't need or something that is beyond your uh, scope of analysis. Okay, so file view is what you see. So normally, um, the, whenever you see all these keywords in context, if you double click on the word, you will always go to file view. You can see here it's move, move to file view, all right? It will move to file view because you can check how it's used in that context itself. Okay. All right. You know, just in case you're curious, you can see like, for example, here, the control, the control, just in case you're, 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 you're curious why, you know, it's written. obviously, you know why here, because it's the name of the bill, but. In case you're curious, you can just double click and then it will bring you to all these excerpts. All right. And whenever you want to go back, you can just go back to key keyword in context and then find it again. Okay. This is left context. This is right context. Just to repeat uh, what I said just now so that you see how, how it changes. Now the font size changes because I changed the font size just now. Never mind. But 
um, I hope you get this point. Keyword in context is useful if you are searching for specific word lists. Uh, like previously, some of my students were doing um, emotive words in um, Instagram caption and all that. So they compile all the captions, but they have the word list already, like all the emotive words that they want to find. So they find one by one and then they, they compile it. Then you will see how um, the emotive words are used in all these Instagram captions, for example. But you have to compile all this first in your, uh, in your uh, how to put it, text file. Um, there were some students who came to see me and say, you know, can you just extract that early? For example, yeah, unfortunately, you can't. <laughs> I mean, no way you can just give the link and then everything will be done for you. You still have to do your manual job because you are the one who's going to decide uh, which posting, which caption you want to take, right? Um, uh, you, at least the analysis part is easier for you because you don't have to manually do the coding or highlighting the words manually. Okay. Um, for view cluster. Uh, any questions so far? Just in case. Before I go to cluster, these are these are one. You know, these two are related. Cluster and gram and collocate are related as well. No, yeah, no questions. Okay, let's go to clustering. As the name suggests, clustering is good. It's similar to Ngram and uh, even collocate. Um, it's good if you want to find um, clusters of words, like when you check for the word smoking, you want to know what are the combination, right? So uh, if you go for smoking, if I just start now, you will see uh, smoking product is widely used. Smoking bill is, you know, second, smoking all, blah, blah. You can see how it's clustered, right? If you prefer three, three words or three tokens, then you put three and then start, right? Smoking product four, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, because of the word smoking, um, normally we go for two words because, you know, like you just want to find, but it depends on what you are looking for. If you're looking for more, then go up the cluster size, but normally it's between two to five, right? So let's say I go back to two. So at least I can see how uh, it's used based on the frequency count. My... My copper size is not that big, obviously, for the star because I just randomly compile all these articles. So you can see the um, the range is not that big as well. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the frequency is not that big, but you get the point of using clustering. Once you load it up, then you will see the clustering. Or maybe I can load um, something bigger. Let me just go to Copper's Manager now. Go to Copper's Database. I'm going to load the American English database uh, 2006. Where is it? Um, yeah, the Academy English one. Okay. So I'm going to load. You can see the this one has more. One file to uh, 80. Let's say I search for the usage of however. All right. I just want to find out whether they use this. So just start. Then you can see frequency is higher and then however da, 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 and blah 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 or you can say we maybe see whether personal pronouns are used or we then we have we are these are clustering okay but this data is no longer the data that we use just now the smoking one this is american english uh, 2006 corpus uh, so you can play around with with whatever corpus you want for now okay at least you you know what it means so you can have a bigger uh, cluster size if you want to, but uh, depending on what you're looking for, then you can increase this and then click start again and then you will rerun it. Okay, so cluster and ngram are the same in a way because ngram means uh, how the words are used in terms of, um, you know, one gram, uh, bigram, and trigram means, let's say I just click start. Same thing you can see, it's quite similar, right? Because this one is two, ngram size is two. So if I go for three, you will see similar data, right? It's just a different name because Ngram, um, it comes with the, um, how to put it? Um, the token comparison, right? You can see here, Ngram tokens, five to three, blah, blah, blah. But if you're not using Ngram, then you don't have to bother about this. Your clustering is enough, right? Some people, they, um, they, they, uh, they're using Ngram analysis. So you might want to, use the ngram version but you can see it's similar after all the meaning is the same anyway because it's looking for the the combination of the usage of the word all right whatever you're looking for here okay um collocate 
This one is like concordance plus engram if you go start. Right? You can see collocate means the word that are normally being used with we. Right? But not like this. We have and all that. But you can see C and we are quite close. Likelihood is 75. The higher the likelihood means the higher the chance of you looking at we and C together. Of course, we is there. Right? The, like the association of all these words. No, no, ourself, what, blah, blah, blah. So the higher the likelihood means the the closer it is with the, the, the word they're looking for. Let's say if I search other words, um, what other words? Maybe book. I'm not sure whether it exists in the... Yeah. So you can see because of academic list, likelihood of the word this is higher means probably we use this book, this book all the time. So the collocation uh, size is higher. The likelihood is higher. All right, but you can also see the frequency left right left right left right means the before and before and after left is before before the word uh before the word book you can see this is used before then after right because the right is after the word book okay so uh collocation is quite useful as well at times to see how uh, certain words are being associated with other words so uh, again, depending on what you're looking for uh, in your analysis, okay? Uh, word, oh, wait, and cl cluster, engram, and collocation. Any question, <laughs> just in case? I'm not sure if you're using this, but uh, it would be useful when you encounter some um, strange usage. Like um, previously, uh, one of my students were doing on um, slangs. So we encountered some weird slangs that we have never heard before. So we run the uh, the class engram and collocate just to check how it is used, just to get the meaning a bit. Uh, and it will show you like, okay, that word is often used only with these words, that kind of uh, usage. Or maybe you can also uh, detect the usage of um, the the word by, by, by field, right? If you're looking at medical field, for example, then certain words are used more in those kind of texts, medical texts or medical, medical articles. If you compare with a uh, normal magazine, maybe you don't see the collocation, so you can do comparison as well, okay? Next one is word. This is the most simplest, uh, the one that people use a lot. <laughs> it's just to check the frequency of the words. Meaning you don't have to search this one, just leave it blank, right? Just leave it blank. Let's say you want to find the frequency of any words used in all this, uh, you know, corpus, just click start. Obviously, in English, the word the is the highest, right? So the frequency is 10,000 times, more than 10,000 times. Then off and to blah, 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 blah. So it will go by uh, the top 10 usage or top, top 50. Okay. This is for, of course, academic English. If you have different set of data, um, you can search it, right? Um, you can search the, the word itself. Let's say, uh, I'm not sure whether I can... Search book again, <laughs> right? Then you will see it's ranked number one, obviously, but it's only 97 times. But this one, you don't get to compare because um, you, are limit, you are limiting it by only one word, right? But for frequency count, normally we will go for blank and then search everything, right? Um, what we normally do, of course, will be copying all this, copy, and then go to Excel, I start a new one. Paste, right? You will get your, you will get your, you know, all this range and everything. This one, POS, we don't have yet. Just delete. Right? Then you will have the, the rank. Like the is used how many times, blah, blah, blah. Then you can delete the one that you don't want. All right? Or in your encode itself, you can go for advanced uh, query. And then you can only, you can tick this one and search only for certain words. But this one will be limiting. Same thing like what we did just now, actually. Same thing like what we did here. Um, um, you know, search certain words only. But it will be limiting, right? Um, yeah, depend on what you're looking for in this case again, because um, the tool is there. But you can see X is there. Probably you will be wondering why X is there. So you can double click on this but no uh, search term because it doesn't detect where it is. I'm not sure why. Maybe it could be 
you know the like X something, all right, uh, Xmas or something, but it's not it's not uh, loaded in the uh, database. Maybe I load our simpler one. It's easier for you to see. Um, let let's try let's try Malay Malay corpus. I have quite a number here. Uh, let's say go for Malay KL one. Just go for Malay one, and then this one is KL VM. All right. Uh, this is I'm creating a new one, so you have to click create. Then you will load a new one now. Every time you want to load a new, uh, new database, you have to create one first, right? Using raw file means you you create your own. Corpus database is what we have created or what we have downloaded. You can see now we have created one KLBM now. Uh, raw file is you know the one that we normally do. We just compile everything in text file and then put it in. Right? Return to main menu. So I have all my new KL one now. So when you want to look, maybe cow, right? Search. You can see even in the Malay corpus, the word the is highly used, right? And then Dan, Saya, Yang, Tu, Ikan, Gaga, all these are Malay words. You can see there. We need, oh, this is slang, by the way. This is Malay, KL, KL Malay, la, you know, KL Malay. So there's a mix of all this, <laughs> the, Saya, and all this. So you can still search. And if you want to see how it's used, mm -hmm. uh, maybe load this one first. Oh, yeah. Why is it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Remember not to, you know, don't forget to uncheck this because every time you check this, because I didn't put anything here, uh, so you won't find anything. So uncheck this one first, search. Then you will see how it's used. Uh, I don't know where. I think the star is still here. Oh, I didn't remove it just now. All right. Uh, let's say cow. Only one. All right. Tadi saya. All right, saya. Then you can see saya telah saya rasa, you know, instead of blah, blah, blah. You can see the usage here, all right? So if if you see the word frequency, I load it again, it's 136. But if I remove saya, start, then you get the whole list. Then you'll be wondering how come in Malay corpus you have the, because I think it's not the Malay corpus, it's these two just now. I, did, I forgot to delete, all right? But... Um, Let's say done. You click the, double click on it, then you will see done. All right, and uh, same thing just now, same concept. So you will see how the word is used. Um, the right context is the you know after the word, left is before the word. So you need to see before and after. Then you get an idea how how the words are used. But this is a line by the right. If you want to see before, then click sort to left. You will see how the word is used before. Right, Gaga. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, because this is, I think, uh, the data is uh, Tritali San. It's a folk tale, but, but then told by the Malay in KL. All right, so, so the, the spelling is a bit different. Okay. All right, so if you need to check can the whole context. Sorry. Yeah. If they search, yeah. of, can it be a phrase, like, rather than words? Can. Words? can, can. Can they say maka nasi if you try to search if it exists lah? No, uh, let me let me try. Yeah, makan it first. It. <laughs> okay, makan ikan. Okay, makan ikan. Then yeah, makan ikan. Okay, oh, you can okay. Search, you can search. Uh, you can search more than one word. Okay, okay. depending on what you're looking at. Um, uh, but normally we go by word list. Okay, that this is this is purely searching based on existing words that you want to find out like um, like if you know you want to find verbs that you can probably search all the words but if you don't want then just click start uh sorry just click um uh, how to put it something okay something makan you can put the asterisk or makan something obviously it will it will just put everything there already right you can put the wild card if you want to this is wild card, or um, I don't know whether ikan ada. Yeah, you can put the asterisk for wild card means any combination, but because our corpus size somehow makan ikan saja, so you can't really see. Uh, uh, you can play with the asterisks, so you can find um any combination of makan something, 
doesn't have to be doesn't have to be ikan right but in 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 our case because the makan ikan seems to be more right so you will see makan ikan more here okay um yeah this is this is word key by how to put it by frequency count keyword um this one is like comparison okay for keyword this one it means you are comparing your corpus with another reference corpus, all right? So this is a bit technical now. If you if you go to file, if you go for open corpus manager, I'm gonna clear this first. I'm gonna clear clear these two first, right? This is this is my target corpus. Return to file. Wait a. Uh, I think let me let me clear the database so that it's easier. For uh, let's try to load back to the smoking one easier for you uh, smoking one and then let's say you want to compare this is target corpus you can see the tab here target corpus this is the one that you have let's say you want to compare it with another corpus uh, like a comparison kind of uh, style so go for reference corpus now it's blank because you have not selected any let's say you want to compare with the uh, American English just now right so just double click on the American Copper. Oh, this one is not complete. Oh, yeah, I didn't download yet. Um, this one down here. Yeah, ready. Make sure it's ready. Yeah, double click and then it will load here. Right, it will be loading uh, loaded here. Then you will see your target corpus is yours. Reference corpus is the one that you are referring to. Your the one that you want to compare. Right. Let's say I'm comparing this corpus with the American English uh, academic list. So you will see two two part here target and then reference all right just now no right just now you don't see this because you're not comparing anything this is useful if you want to check the likelihood of whatever you have in your corpus in comparison with some other corpus or corpora that 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 you have you know you want to compare right, let's say if i search this i just click start then you can see in uh, the word smoking appears more frequently in the target one, TR stands for target, but only appear twice in the the other corpus. But the likelihood is high. The higher the likelihood means this word is really, really important in the corpus that we have, in the target corpus. Really important as in is the keyword used in these two uh, articles as compared to the uh, you know the reference one, meaning it's not impacting the, the reference corpus right it's like this if you find it low right if you, if the likelihood is low means your words are not really technical words means it's commonly used in this corpus as well you know what i mean like um the higher the keyness the higher the likelihood means the more specific is the word for that particular um you know corpus that you have for example you, you have compiled like five articles from the star you want to compare with academic word list, right? You downloaded the academic word list. The academic word list will be, or the academic corpus will be your reference corpus. Then you compare with yours. Suddenly you realize the likelihood is very high for one word, like suddenly smoking is very high, for example. Obviously, the articles that you have compiled, you have compiled, are talking about smoking more than the common one. So your, you can say that the, you know, these articles are highly, specialized to one theme so one one scope you know what i mean some common words like malaysia is also more here because this is american english obviously the corpus side may not have a lot of malaysian word or even COVID and all this but you can see lower down some basic word like fine and all that even before appears more in the uh reference corpus this is a reference corpus that means the likelihood the keenest likelihood is lower the higher the likelihood for all the keyness here means the more specialized is the word in the corpus that you are targeting. Your target corpus are your corpus, not the, the one that you're referring to. Okay, but it really depends on your comparison as well. If you're comparing more or less the same, um, you know, same, same level, let's say if you are comparing by certain level, uh, like CEFR, you know, CFR, uh, Common Written Framework, like you want to compare C1 and C1, obviously the likelihood will be lower because it's supposed to be equal. But let's say you assume it's equal. Uh, when you run the, when you run this NCONT uh, keyword analysis, the likelihood suddenly very high 
That means there's one word used in all your compiled text here. It's weird. <laughs> you know, weird as in it could be good, could be bad, or uh, could be too technical that is repeatedly used in all your articles, but not in the CFR word list, for example. So the, the higher the likelihood, the, the, you know, the more specialized it is. Obviously, you can see all this top, top 10. It's very specialized to the articles because the articles that I compile are all about smoking bill in Malaysia. All right. Okay. <laughs> Any questions so far? Can I? Okay. Monica asks for a word. Can I search for more than one word at one time? Uh, like Kami and Kita at the same time. Um, you have to do one by one. Yeah, you have to do one by one. If you search multiple times, um, if you if you do more than one word, sometimes it will be uh, quite confusing because you will highlight different lines, right? It's better to do one by one. I hope I answered that, Wadika. Okay, word cloud is optional. I think this one you don't you don't really use it. They just added this word cloud, uh, you know, from uh, out of the blue for for this version. So work cloud, work cloud means you can, you, whatever result you have here, let's say I run one here, let's say I run another time smoking, you know, all the results here that you have in whatever tab you have, it can change it into work cloud. Let's say I want to have a work cloud for keyword in context, KWIC, I just click start and then it will generate the work cloud based on the result here. Obviously it's smoking, because I search for the term smoking anyway, right? But if you want to go for frequency, then you can remove the word smoking, start. Let's say you get all this, uh, you know, all this uh, result. You go to word cloud, change to uh, word, and then start. Then you can see the is bigger because in your rank, the is number one, two is number two. But I don't think it's useful. Somehow I don't really like the word cloud visualization, but just telling tell, just telling you that it exists. All right. You can even change the color and everything if you want. All right. Uh, and then start again. It will change the word cloud color. Maybe more useful if you have specialized search of words. All right. Maybe more specialized if you have that. But I think if you are looking for like top 10, let's say I go for top 10. If I were to go to top 10 here, uh, just now it's all hit. Now it's 10, top 10 only. If I click, start again and then if i go to word cloud then i get this not that meaningful <laughs> all right but just to tell you that it exists here so we have keyword in context plot uh, plot is useful if you have more than one if it's only one the plotting may not be that beneficial but unless you want to look at the dispersion uh, file view is where you view the file clustering more than one word uh, ngram too these three are the same Depending on what kind of mechanism you're looking at, because ngram, you'll follow the ngram format. Collocate somehow will give you more words than the direct combination, meaning uh, the words that are quite close to the word in before and after. And word is the word frequency, right? Mo most likely the frequency count, the word usage. Um, keyword is to find the likelihood of the word in another corpus, to compare the likelihood of the, uh, the word appearing in more than one corpus, all right? And then work cloud. Okay. Any questions so far? <laughs> and, uh, any, any questions so far, just in case? Uh, hello, doctor. Uh, I have uh, two questions here. The first yeah. one is, uh, can I directly put PDF file or Word file into uh, NCONC? Okay. For PDF, you actually you can put more put PDF put Word, but uh, the the advice is to use text txt because it's cleaner. Because if you put Word, when you sometimes when we copy Microsoft Word content, it will you will accidentally copy all the what do you call that the the website script or whatever. So it will have extra things that you don't see. That's what I meant. So uh, if you use text file, the text file will clean all your content and only words are being retained. You know what I mean? Like here, right? You can see in text file, it's clean. If you use Word, it will copy everything, including the table and everything. When you load it on NCON, it can still read, but sometimes it will end up 
having some extra things that you don't need. Right? But it, you can do that. The answer is can, but not advisable. <laughs> I hope okay. you get my point. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The second question is if I compare uh, my target corpus with reference corpus, uh, should the number be equal? Uh, the, in other words, if I have my target corpus of uh, two, more than 200 files and a reference corpus only 50, 50 files, is yeah. it available? Can it be performed? It, it can compare, uh, but you can see the likelihood this one, the likelihood uh, will be will be higher because obviously my size is uh, smaller. What happened is it still rank according to the likelihood, but you can see the number is a bit ridiculously high, right? Because the word count or the token size is different. So if you want to reduce these extreme numbers, you make sure that the the target corpus and the reference corpus, the tokens are quite equ equivalent in the in the size. So to make to make the number smaller so that it doesn't look so big, then you make sure that the token size are similar. But if you don't want to, right, if you don't want to, meaning you have different in terms of size, you can do it like what I did here. It's just that the reporting of the numbers will be slightly bigger, still meaningful anyway, because it's still ranked number one. You know what I mean? Uh, for example, if the token size is similar, let's say I have 16,000, sorry, 161,000 tokens here. And then if I have 160,000 uh, here as well, the token size will slightly be smaller because, uh, no, no, not token size, sorry. The likelihood, the number will be smaller, maybe around, maybe around 20 or 18 because the, the size are quite similar. Um, or else later on you can try, if you put, same size, you will notice that the keener size will be will be lower. The, the number is still lower, but it's still ranked number one anyway. What I mean here is like this, it still tells you the, the same the same results. Still smoking is very specialized, but the when you report, then you know it looks very ridiculously high because your this this size is bigger. Alright? Uh, get me? Okay. So you can run, but then it, you can run it, just that when you report it, then you probably, you know, might want to, de uh, you know, might want to justify why the number is so big, right? The closer the size of the token, the smaller, slightly smaller the uh, the keenness or likelihood, unless the usage of the word is extremely high, right? Unless the the word is extremely high, okay? Okay, I see. And what does uh, keenness effect mean? Oh. What can oh, those numbers show us? Keyness effect. Um, let me go to this tool setting. If you go to tool setting, um, if you go to keyword, let me just can you see, sorry, sorry, let me just let me just enlarge the size for 16. Okay, let me enlarge the size a bit. So if you go to tool setting. Under keyword, um, if you go to effect size, you have this all this log likelihood two term, four term. So the default one is four term. This one you have to go and check it out first. Which one you think is useful for you? The the one that the uh, corpus linguists use is always log likelihood. Not sure whether you're familiar, but uh, it basically means how likely is the word appearing in the the bigger corpus as compared to yours. The, the one that they use is four term max, but the the one the effect size is dice log ratio. This one is slightly more technical. Some people go for dice, some people go for Z score, but kind of same meaning. What happened is effect size means um it's quite quite similar to likelihood in a way. This word smoking for the your copper size, the bigger the effect size. Let me just go by effect size. Can I go by effect? Yeah, effect. If you go by effect size, it means the higher the effect size, the more important is the word in your corpus. Um, yeah, more, more important as it is used widely in that corpus that you're using uh, or corpus that you're targeting, right? Um, in, in this case, because my articles are all about smoking, obviously the word smoking should be the one uh, with the highest effect. If I take out smoking, in other words, if you take out smoking from your corpus, 
uh, basically your corpus is gone in a way like um, how 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 should I explain this? It's like because it's about smoking. If you take out the word smoking from all your corpus, it means the the whole text will kind of be no longer about smoking or um, could be something general. I don't know whether you get me. Okay, like this. When you comp compare two types of text, can be one gen generic text, can be anything, right? And then one is specialized text. In order for this text to be specialized, this specialized text need to use certain words that distinguish it from the other text. Let's say if it's an academic text, this text should be using a lot of academic words. So the higher the keyness means all these words, the academic words or whatever in this text should be there. If you take these academic words out, it's no longer academic. It becomes generic. You get me? So the higher the effect size means the more important is the word to distinguish the specialization of that text or the, uh, yeah, the, how to put it, the specific uh, genre of that particular uh, uh, corpus or the text that you are analyzing, okay? But I think you don't really have to report this. I don't think we, we use it. I, I myself don't really use this, but it's good to know uh, like key, key, keyness likelihood and keyness effect when you're comparing. It's more meaningful if you compare equal, um, not to say equal, similar text. Right now, my, mine is a bit biased because I'm comparing news articles with academic English. So it may not be that accurate. If I compile all the academic texts, like all essays written by students, I compile all the essays and then I run it with this reference corpus. Learned means academic list. Then I can see a different trend. So I can say like in Malaysian academic texts, uh, said is used widely, for example. In American academic text, said is not used at all or maybe rarely used because the likelihood is higher in my corpus. Get me? <laughs> I don't know whether I get, I explain this well. Uh, does the, that that number, the, the effect number, um, mean uh, related be related with the significance level? Uh, not really. Um, not really significant. Not not. You, I I don't really like to to, to use the word significant because um, it's more like important. Yeah, I would say, <laughs> even though it sounds similar to significant, means it doesn't mean that uh, the the text doesn't you know um, cannot stand on its own without a word. It just means that if you uh, if you see the effect size, this word, this word is highly important in your news article because you're looking for that thing, right? Uh, like you're compiling, uh, compiling all about smoking. Obviously, this one has to be higher. But it doesn't mean that, um, how to put it? Um, um, I don't like to use the significant because when you say significant, it's like you're saying that this word is... Uh, it's significant that word is not significant it's more like the importance of it the level of influence that it has on other 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 words okay i see thank you, you doctor thank you very yeah. much okay any other any other question no <laughs> it's very clear thank you Okay, okay. Um, I, I did not include, uh, you know, I did not include uh, by type. Unfortunately, in NCON, this one, um, it doesn't come with the uh, part of speech tagging. Meaning, let's say in the uh, data, in your corpus, you want to find only verbs. It doesn't allow you to search directly like that. You have to do the better search. So for those who want to do that, you might want to download the uh, the tag version, the encont. Uh, go to the link is now. Oh yeah, that link is now. Go to software, and you might want to try this one. So I don't have time to cover this. Maybe for next session. But if you want to explore, this is called uh, tag and uh, and it's part of speech tagger, but only for English at the moment. Only for English at the moment. Uh, for Malay and all that, uh, they you have to probably list give them the list, like you have to upload your own list of categorization that it will be able to find for you. Uh, the one that they have are all English, uh, POS, uh, part of speech. This is for those who want to detect like verb usage, noun usage, or you know adjectives and whatnot. This is this is uh, tagging according to the uh, part of speech. All right, you might want to try that, but Encon itself. 
uh, doesn't allow that uh, on, on the main one, the Encon main one doesn't allow that because you need to search on your own. Okay. All right. If no further question, <laughs> just in case. No? Seems seems to be. One seems to be. <laughs> I don't know whether. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dr. Dayang, is it? Dayang, Dr. Dayang. Mm. Mm. Hi, uh, apa, Mr. Kiman? Mm. Okay, sorry. Uh, nak tanya kalau corpus yang berbentuk uh, hard copy, maksudnya uh, ah. boleh, macam mana nak tukar dalam bentuk TXT itu? Tu, tu yang, tu yang leci sikit. But now, uh, now um, what you can do is you use all this apa ni guna tag uh, apa ni image to tags macam ah cari 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 sekarang tags tags recognition dah makin canggih so macam ah tags to tags image to tags ya yeah? image biasanya we scan lah but those days the uh, it depends on the depending on the quality of the printing juga ataupun the quality of the hard copy yang kita ada tu so yang ni uh, yang ni yang selalu orang guna lah uh, but but i don't think it's free fully free but ja yeah. you want this one kena beli yeah. boleh guna up to 50 images so kalau dah oh. up snap then for example ja aisha ada tak i go google and see ja yeah. Kena cari text. This one, assuming your text is in, uh, your text is in image lah kan. Tapi kalau dalam um, dalam PDF senang, you just use Adobe tu, Adobe Acrobat. You just change it to text um, from from. Kalau ada Adobe software lah. Tapi yang ni kalau image. So let's say I put here. Jangan cari jap. Ada tak text? Kena cari text. Simple, simple text. Tak nampak ni. Okay. Ni tapi kabur. Okay. <laughs> let me try and find one image and see. Okay, let's say I have this image. The problem with image is always the quality of the image. Let's say I have this image. Articles. Scan. Kena bayar ke ni? No right? Sekejap. <laughs> bayar. Oh, exit. Too big. Oh, too big lah pula. Sekejap. Okay, I find a smaller one. So, the file size is a bit too big. Actually, another one is Google Lens. Nantilah kita jumpa. Okay, this is one file. Alright, and then submit. Yang ni, file dia... So you will scan through, right? Or ah, you can see text dia dah keluar dah. So, so you can just download. Yeah, ni text tadi lah. Okay. Oh, sorry. So dia akan extract the uh, they extract the content from the image tu jadi text file macam ni. Okay. So, oh, you can search image to text converter. Ada banyak lagi lah yang yang uh, yang ada ni. Macam online OCR pun ada. So, you search for the file. Let's say I upload this uh, article tadi. And then, you you can choose whether you want to use doc ataupun plain text. And then, you make sure your language is there. Yang ni asalnya Malay tak ada kot. Ada. Ha, ada. Malay ada. Malay ada. Then, convert. It will take some time. Right. Let me see. Another one is Google Lens. Lah. Tapi Google Lens ni dia on your mobile tu. Tapi dia leci sikit. Because you want to copy tu susah. Yang ni dia dah copy. Okay. So yang ni artikel yang newspaper artikel cutting tadi tu. Yang ni. The one that I downloaded as an image just now. Sorry. I just have to show some the window. This one. This is image right? Image. So you use the tool just now. And it converted it to text, 
right? But but you can see, depending on quality of the image, some of the words they are not detect, right? Some of the words too, uh, they are not detect, right? So this is one, but you can try others. Okay, any other two, uh, Doctor Dayan? Uh, uh, hello. Oh, Dr. Nora. Okay. Dr. Nora here. Ah, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, ah, <laughs> Saya pun belum mencuba ni. But my students, my student ada buat benda ni. Ah, I don't okay. know how bagus, he bagus. did it. Ah, uh, he managed to get like a uh, one million. Ah, uh, wow. Ah, uh, yeah, but wow, he did it himself. Um, uh, apa nu? Dia guna. I mean, maybe. I think the person ya uh, apa yang yang dia ada program uh, dia buat macam formula eh? formula mm. untuk dia clean up the the data yes, yes. No? so tadi yes, dayang yes. dayang cakap tadi kan uh, mm. uh, macam macam encom ni dia ada english aja dalam tu kan english punya yes. corpus kan yes yes tapi if you want to create your own corpus yang dari bahasa lain tu that yeah. you have to clean up the data is quite complicated manually you no know? kan Betul, Sebab betul. I remember uh, my students uh, Usman tu, dia mm. consult Dr. Hadiman lah. Hadiman from Cognitive mm. Science dia. Kita timbalan mm. dia penyelidikan tu. Dia mm. memang mm. Ko, uh, apa, bidang computational linguistics. Yeah, linguistics. Kan? <coughs> Jadi betul. dia uh, untuk apa uh, uh, input kepada Dayang tadi. Yang, so I remember I was there. Uh, mm. Dia uh, ajar Usman tu macam mana nak clean up the data kan. Yeah. Jadi uh, Usman had problem with the data because macam tadi kan ada macam uh, program But tu man... dia tak dapat read certain things right macam uh, macam symbol symbol apa tu dot ke sign symbol apa ke dia ada certain symbol dia tak boleh baca tau so if Correct. dia tak selagi dia tak buang uh, data uh, symbol symbol tu kita tak boleh uh, guna untuk encon ni betul Ah, hmm. so the the you can do it manually satu persatu simbol tu uh, dibuang. Hmm. I saw hmm. my my student my, actually my student uh, uh, taught me how to do it, but I haven't I haven't uh, try <laughs> again. Uh, dia boleh uh, buat secara manual dah yang. Tapi you can always pay people to do it for you. And satu lagi, um, it, uh, dia boleh guna programming lah. Macam uh, the formula yeah. dia mereka guna untuk clean up the data. And yeah. it doesn't take that much uh, time. Mm, yang mm, saya betul, tahu betul. lah, this is from my experience lah. Uh, Usman is doing uh, uh, models lah. Uh, uh, obligatory models in Pakistani English lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had, uh, nobody wants to give him, uh, people don't want to give him the the English data uh kan a uh, corpus tu yep. jadi dia terpaksa yep. buat sendiri he, he collected from the macam tu jugaklah from different uh, from uh, in in text form in uh, from the apa nama from the internet kan yep. but, yep. but yep. he managed to do it ya yeah? yep. from zero yep. he managed to do it <laughs> so ada yang yep. kalau you nak you boleh consult dia lah Usman nama dia Usman tu boleh uh, how he created his own corpus lah Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, are, there, are, there, are, there are a few, apa ni? There are a few of corpus builder yang uh. boleh kita guna lah. Uh, oh, ada corpus so, builder lah macam mana? Ada, ada, ada. Uh. ada. So, corpus builder, <coughs> dia dia cuba clean up lah. The thing is, um, kita masih juga kena macam yang Dr. 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 Dayan tanya tadi. Kalau, kalau, dia, kalau dia jenis macam ni, printed. Hmm. Kita, masih tugas kita untuk scan, you know, untuk untuk extract. Tapi hmm. kalau you you get from soft copy yang macam all from web, that will be easier lah. Because web version tu kita kita bagi link. Like this is one example yang macam I show you this link. This is uh this link is called web page to plain text. So you just give the link, right? And then you can convert to text. But the problem is. Like I said, it will also include all the menu atas ni. Ah, uh, so, itu yang my student aja. Uh, <laughs> so you can you can delete ni nanti. So you just take this part only. All right, you can just just take this part only. But still, it's similar to what similar to what we were doing just now lah masa mula mula tadi. You still have to decide which part you want to take. You just copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. 
If you use Corpus Builder, can download, you can search Corpus Builder. Okay. What happens is Corpus Builder, bila kita copy plain text ni to the Corpus Builder, the Corpus Builder will arrange line by line, systematically lah, not not like they jumble up everything. Mm. Yeah, but uh, but for Encon, actually Encon is quite quite intelligent enough. Okay. Even if like just just now your data ni, if you just copy paste randomly like this, it will still read. Walaupun, you know, even though the, the sentences are all disjointed like this, it will still be able to read. It's just that we just have to remove all these extra things that we don't need, right? So, uh, like like Dr. Dr. Nora mentioned, you can use some command to, to remove, but you need to know what you're removing. Lah, right? Like if you are looking for the star article, the star article, the other tendency to use like uh, read, like re related news and whatever, you search for those things and then it will be removed from your from your corpus mm. but the easiest way the easiest way, without using any software is actually the find and replace <laughs> all right fine uh, replace fine let's okay. say you find you find related news then replace it with blank just a come blank just put a space and then replace all for example lah, and then you will search and then you will replace all these uh, words that you don't want. Or let's say you don't want the word, I just try here. Then just replace all. Then all the word with rush will be removed. This is this is the simplest way, like what we do in Microsoft Word or uh, Notepad. But uh, there are software available, like uh, what was mentioned by Dr. Nora. Uh, Cuma yang tu requires a bit of programming lah, right? It's a bit of programming if you those who are interested. So, so correct, yang, what we are talking about today is the analysis part. Like I mentioned earlier juga, if you don't have the corpus, you can't do the analysis. So Encon is only meaningful after you have done your, after you have done your compilation or your corpus too. All right. So I think, um, let me check, let me check, uh, this Lawrence Anthony. I think he has a, do we, can't remember whether he provide the, uh, Encon builder, uh, not here, maybe not here. Not here, uh, but I'll, I'll share if you want to a Corpus Builder. To my Corpus Builder is another software, so it could be complicated. But I think the easiest way is to just copy it in uh, text format, like this, right? Like just uh, just copy it in text format, or uh, you can copy in Microsoft Word first or PDF, whatever you want, but save it as TXT uh, text. Then you can use uh, Encon easier. Okay. <laughs> Maybe another session on building corpus lah, right? <laughs> yani, yani just analysis saja tak 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 ada pasal not not about building the corpus. But if you want another session, we can have another session lah. Maybe can invite. Yeah, I can always uh, arrange that. Uh, you know, invite invite Dr. Adiman sekali. Tapi tapi Dr. Adiman you guna Python. I know, I know. Oh, you guna Python. Uh, so because. For for computational linguistic, we also use it for you know sentiment analysis and everything. That one is another software, but more or less the same thing like We still have to compile the uh the corpus anyway. Still, without the corpus, we can't do any analysis. So, uh, uh like Fire Ant, the one that you can download is for social media. Same thing. Uh, the the another software by Lawrence Anthony is called Fire Ant. Those of you who are doing social media analysis, you can try that software first. Uh, the uh, you can extract posting from Facebook, from Twitter. Now it's under review because of the changes. Now can datuka to X and then Elon Musk remove all the API, so you, so you can't use the Twitter data directly. You have to do the manual manual extraction. Uh, but um, those yeah, extra extract ni is more technical lah. That's why I don't really cover today. It's more on the um, technical part of how to how to build your corpus. But Encon is more to analysis, more to analyzing your 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 text textual data. So for for those who are doing mini research, like uh, if you if you are compiling, uh, compiling you know all these article using TXT sort by article, that will be more than enough actually for, for uh for uh for analysis. It's just that, yeah lah, repetitive work lah. <laughs> copy paste, copy paste, you know that kind of thing. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Ask back to Dr. Nisa. 
Turut 63 orang partisipan. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, that actually makes me feel a little bit better about my inability to <laughs> explain to people how to use the encore. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have to share the... Oh, oh yeah, you want to share the QR code. Yeah, I need to share the, the attendance. Okay, so I have an activity attendance. Sharing. Okay, this is the attendance. 